Hi everybody, welcome to 8 Minutes to Chew On. We're doing part 4 on your purpose in the church. And we covered a quite a sensitive issue yesterday, yes, but it was yes, very yes, good, yes, very yes. encouraging. Is Part of our purpose is to protect our church, the local body. Not just your own church, but every, every yeah. church, because Jesus died for the church. Mm-hmm. And so... Go and listen to that sermon. Go onto our website and uh, go and download and listen to it. Because this morning I was thinking it'll be nice to actually just speak a little bit on. You mentioned yesterday about it's, it's our purpose to keep unity. Um, but there wasn't time to touch on how do I keep unity? You know, when, mm. when I'm angry with somebody or I'm unhappy with leadership or I, whatever the case may be. Um, how do I make sure that I, I actually resolve that in a godly way, yeah. which is what you what you mentioned, so that I don't give the devil a foothold mm. to use my mouth and my my influence to break down the church or leadership mm. or or anybody within the church. Yeah. So so how do I deal with with that biblically? Okay. Before I get there, I just want to say that so often you preach a sermon or you say something, you say to a person, don't take this personally. Yeah. But I actually want you to take it personally. Mm-hmm. Because you know that the unity of the church, ne- church, Nick, is, like I said yesterday, so vital for its effectiveness among us mm-hmm. and also the effectiveness mm-hmm. in the community. So coming back to your question, how do I deal with it? I think conflict is natural. It's normal. It happens in any relationship. It happens happens between you and me. It happens between uh, your wife and, 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 and husband. There's always a way to do it. And the easiest way not to do it, that we all lean towards, is to think that I will just walk away from it. And especially as men, we do that. You know, mm-hmm. we, we think that it's going to be okay. I'm just going to walk away with it. But what happens is that it just boils. And slowly... It boils more and more and more. It gets more and more heated. It gets more and more frustrated because you're not dealing with it properly. And what is the proper way? We know what the Bible says, you know, and it's not necessarily to have this Matthew 18 because I think Matthew 18 is either neglected or overemphasized. Mm. But sometimes the way to deal with it, always the way to deal with it, if there is an issue that let's say, let's say, let's, let's take an example. You didn't like some of the things that were said in the sermon yesterday. So what do you do? Now you go to Theo and you say, hey, 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 hey. and Theo has never even thought about it. So he, he gets all excited over your issue, not the real issue, your issue. Mm. So he takes on your offense. So first thing I want to say is don't take on other people's offenses. Mm. Number two is advice. advise people. The moment a person comes here, I am upset about this. They say, well, you know what to do. Remember my friend, I don't want to hear it. You know, is send them back to the source. And if if I have an issue with you, the cowardly way to deal with it mm. is to go to other people about it and create an issue that is now fed with lies, perceptions, my own whatever, you know, whatever I want to add to it. And it becomes normally 10 times worse than what it actually is. And so... I think the best thing is to say, listen, I don't want to hear it. Let me send you back to the source. Go and sort it out with Nick or Rulof, not with me. I am innocent. I'm not part of this. And I don't want to be part of this fight. It's not my fight, mm-hmm. this one. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of the thing is, is let us learn how to confront. Yeah. And confrontation is not necessarily always a Matthew 18. So you've got to learn to confront. But sometimes you've got to learn to just let things go. Mm-hmm. It is often not that important Mm. you know if if it is that important then we can deal with it in a biblical way with a person bring it to the elders and so on Mm. but we have got to learn how to biblically deal with our differences Mm. and like i said yesterday 95 percent of our differences in church or our fights in church has not got to do with heretic Mm. uh, um, What's the word I'm looking mm. for with with heretics or with with, yeah. with wrong teachings or anti-biblical? Te- it's got to do with preferences. Mm. I don't like a specific way, so I make it a major issue. Let go. So deal with it, or just let go of it. And when you let go of it, it means you don't pass it on. Mm. You let go of it. And and many times I just had to say to myself, let go of it. I want to justify. I want to let go. And I think those for me are, are the two important things. There's a whole host of others probably as well, because I also have got to forgive. 
Sometimes when a thing is said, I sometimes look at these posts on, 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 on YouTube and the guy says, yeah, but this one said so and so on. And when you look at it in the context of what has been said, it is totally taken out of context. Mm. That's a danger. So read things in context. And sometimes a preacher says something on the spur of the moment and it's not always uh, uh, right or amazing or whatever. Mm. Let it go. Mm. So those are just a few things I think is important. I think um, as we come to a conclusion, I remember listening to a podcast the other day and the guy said, you know, the Bible teaches us very clearly to speak the truth in love. Mm. But we as Christians interpret that, that I must speak my opinions in love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. I thought that's such a yeah. good saying because the truth is the word of God. I mean, if, yeah. if, you, if we differ on what the Bible says, we speak to each other. Mm. But if I've got a different opinion, mm. you know, I've got a different opinion. It doesn't mean that I must now go yeah. cr- 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 create chaos yeah. about it. As we close this morning, I uh, wanted to ask you, why do you think, I know it's a long, a big question, but maybe in a summary, why do you think it's such a big deal for God mm. that we as his church learn to live together, get along, work together, love each other, you know, all those kind of kind of things? Why, why, why would it be important? Yeah, that's, a, that's a, an interesting question to ask. Mm. Why would it be so important for God? I think, as I said yesterday, I think it is because the strength, the effectiveness of the church mm. is very much dependent on its unity. Mm. Uh, very, very much. Obviously, doctrinal issues are important and so on. But if we fight one another, the enemy has got a foothold and a stronghold. And so that's why I said he just nudges us into negativity, nudges us into, you know, those of us who've got a, uh, an issue, uh, he just, he uses us. Those of us who've got a bad self-image, those who've got a, who want to be heard, he just nudges us. And, and God speaks out more about the issue of unity than heaven or hell. That means it is so serious to him mm. that I've got to take it seriously. So I think for me, the core issue here is the effectiveness of the church, the witness of the church. You know, Jesus says, it's interesting, doesn't he say, Father, I pray that they may be one, like we are one, like I'm in you and you and me, that they may be in us. So that, and what is the so that? Mm. It speaks after that about being witnesses in yeah. the community. Yeah, yeah. So I think... Our witness is destroyed, ineffective, Mm. if we promote disunity in the church. It is extremely serious, and I would almost say sometimes demonic. So as Rolf challenged us earlier, we we need to take this personally. We as as believers in the church, none of us Mm. um, can say, well, this doesn't apply to me because... You know, I, I, I think it's in James where he says you can turn a ship, but to control the tongue yeah. is impossible virtually. Mm-hmm. So let's watch what we say. Let's watch what we think. Let's watch what we pass on. Mm-hmm. Let's do what we encourage yesterday. I'd rather encourage, rather think of the, the, the good of other people and the good of your church and deal with the issues because God's glory is at stake yeah. through all this. So we want to see God's glorified through his church. Enjoy your day. And uh, we hope to see you on Sunday, 8, 10 and 5 p.m.